Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo. I'm Reckless coming at you again with another episode of our South American Zoo. This is our second installment into this uh, little mini project we're doing here for the South American DLC pack. And today we are doing a uh, capuchin monkey, the uh, Colombian capuchin monkey habitat today. So I wanted to do this one. I had a really cool request uh, by one of the viewers uh, for a combined habitat with the uh, giant anteater and the tapir, which I actually thought was a fantastic idea. And I'm going to be doing that uh, as like a little herbivore special, if you will. But I wanted to get the capuchin out just because, uh, aside from the jaguar, I think they are the second coolest animal in this pack, just from a, a fanfare sort of uh, appeal, if you will. Also, I had a pretty cool idea for a habitat for him here, uh, so I wanted to get this out to you guys. I hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy the content, please make sure to leave a like, and if you're not already, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel out a lot. I want to say welcome to all the new subscribers. The Jaguar video was a huge success in my eyes. Uh, the views were absolutely in incredible and you guys killed it on the likes. Uh, it's the most likes I think any of my videos have ever gotten. So I want to thank each and every one of you that hit that like button as well as subscribed uh, during the last uh, video we put out. So thank you all again for supporting the channel and I hope I can continue to make content that you guys enjoy well into the future. So along with the capuchin habitat, I mean they're small animals right? So I didn't want to just give you uh, a small little animal habitat and call it a day. I wanted to include something tropical to accentuate it. So we made a butterfly house. Uh, this is uh, something I got an idea from through browsing the uh, items and if you have gotten the pack already you'll know that there is a new light that is a butterfly and the cool thing about these butterflies is that you can change the color of the butterfly which not only makes them look different but it actually changes the color of the light itself so I thought that was a great opportunity to create kind of a, a cool little uh, I don't know what you would even call it, like an exhibit? Uh, I don't even know. Uh, but we're calling it our butterfly house. And let me tell you, <laughs> working with these glass pieces, oh my goodness. Like, uh, the angled bit that you see here, the kind of the, the three angled corner piece, it only snaps the one way. So like, I wanted it to like zig and zag and go the other way, but it's supposed to face out. So every time I, I turned it around to face inward, like on the right side of the screen that you're seeing here now, every time I did that, uh, the piece would no longer snap to it, obviously, because it's treating it as inside when it's in fact outside. So I had to break this up into a, a couple different uh, groups and at the end of the build, you know, the, the as you can see here, the pieces don't quite line up. And you know what? I just gave up. I said, forget it. It looks good enough. And I filled in the gaps with pillars. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes when you're building, you just got to work with what you're given. And uh, you got to cut corners <laughs> where you can because the, the building components in this game are really great. But there's certain things, especially when you're working on the grid, that it just, oh, it, it can drive you to drinking. And if, if you guys are like myself during this uh, quarantine, you're already doing a fair bit of that anyhow. So, you know, I don't want anything else that's adding stress onto my, uh, my plate. <laughs> but either way, we got it done. I think it looked uh, looks okay. The roof took me ages as well, being that they're all different... Uh, Groups. I had to segment the roof pieces into the different groups as well. Struggle with the design a bit. It's a little bit all over the place, but you know we're we're calling it new age. You know what I mean? Like this is like some progressive new age style <laughs> class work. Uh, yeah, you know I think it it turns out okay, right? I, I'm sure you guys will appreciate the work I put into it. Um, 
I, you know I'm not the best with this kind of building stuff anyway. It's not really my forte. So whenever I do these things, I hope you can understand the, the struggle and the challenge that I do it, it put forward to myself for you guys, right? Like this is all for you. You know, like if, if I had my way, there wouldn't be any buildings or anything like that. But I think, you know, a zoo needs it and the... Uh, it challenges myself and you know I am getting better as I go along it's just uh, uh, like to build this uh, building that we're looking at here took me probably about three and a half to four hours if I'm being honest this this whole build took me close to nine hours of recording time uh, split up over a couple of days so that's one thing I wanted to address I, I hope you guys can understand that, uh, you know, I'm not the fastest builder out there and I, I can't crank out a video every day for you guys. It's just, I can't physically do it, right? Like my building process takes some time. I'm not the fastest in, in building things. And certainly, you know, when it comes to like decorating with plant life and stuff like that, I like to take my time, but also... Uh, I'm still getting used to the editing software I have. I use a Movavi video editor, and it's not the greatest, but I mean, it was the difference between, uh, I think it's like 80 bucks and like $700 for like something like Sony Vegas or something. So until, you know, YouTube progresses along, uh, I'll, I have to use this software for the foreseeable future. And, uh, you know, it takes a while when you first upload uh, clips into the editor uh, it automatically converts them to like an, an HD type file or I don't even know what it's doing but it takes a while before I can even edit the videos like it, it'll freeze up and it won't let me uh, do anything really so the whole process of making these videos takes me a good couple of days just to edit and put it all together I'm not a master of it I know uh, some of you can probably whip this stuff together in a matter of minutes, but you know, I'm still learning as well. So uh, I hope you guys can understand that I get these videos out as quickly as I can to you guys, but I do have real life obligations as well. YouTube is not my full time job, and I'm trying to do as much work as possible right now, being that my actual job is uh, not open. Uh, due to uh, quarantine and stuff like that. So uh, just bear with me, guys. You guys seem to be super supportive. No one's complained about my upload schedule so far. I just wanted to let you guys know that I, I do crank these out as fast as possible for you guys. I know you want to see the content, and I appreciate you guys tuning in to see my version of these habitats and stuff. So I, I guess I just want to say thank you again to all of you for tuning in, and uh, I hope you enjoy the stuff uh, I create. I use a couple workshop pieces for this build. Uh, you'll see me place it in in a, a few minutes here. Basically, there's a couple items on the workshop that are just absolutely fantastic for the South American stuff, mainly uh, building-wise, like uh, houses and shop fronts and stuff like that that look uh, very... Uh, authentic if you will to the region and it's just it would take me absolutely ages to do myself uh, yeah like this here this is a, a street block if you will like a, a little community area that I found on the workshop uh, I, I couldn't find it again when I was making this uh, video in order to credit the artist. I'm going to try and put the link in the description. But it's if you type in South America, that's how I found it. And basically, this is, it had a couple different staff areas in there. Uh, I think it was like a... Uh, uh, oh yeah, here we go. It's a research center and uh, information and stuff. And I changed that to a keeper's hut, staff room and uh what do you call it the workshop for the mechanic but you look at how great this looks right like it would take me hours and hours and hours to develop something like this so i, I i've said this in previous videos and uh, but i'll say it again i will be using workshop pieces just simply because you know i want to uh showcase the work of others and i'm going to do my absolute best to start crediting these people because i think they're very deserving of it uh it's it's work that i wouldn't be either i wouldn't be able to do myself 
or it would just take me such an obscene amount of time that it isn't worth my time investment. So yeah, you, you just slap it in your zoo and it looks absolutely fantastic. So again, I'm going to try and credit these people down in the description uh, if I can find their work again in the workshop. But yeah, I wanted to do the capuchin monkey because I had this cool idea of uh, a tunnel leading out to like these new trees that they added with the DLC. This tree just screams climbing for monkeys, right? Like it's got these uh, big spindly branches that just look like they're begging to be climbed on, right? So it's actually a little bizarre. Like the capuchins need uh, a log or like some of the climbing frame stuff to actually get up on the tree, which is a little bit bizarre, but uh, I, I set it up so the main area of the habitat is with their food and everything is near the viewing area in the back and then they come through the tunnel and then all of their enrichment items are on this little island uh, with this tree so I wanted them to spend most of their playtime on this little island and have all the zoo guests walk around this uh, pavilion uh, in order to go to the butterfly house and whatnot, but also just, you know, see the cap capuchins at play as they go around. So, you know, I think the the concept turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it as well. And uh, I hope you guys uh, like my take on it. Here we are going through just kind of jungle -fying the habitat as I normally do. This is, of course, the... Uh, what is it? The crowberry bush, my absolute favorite bush for filling spaces. It's just uh, the perfect texture of leaf and the amount of uh, bushiness to, to really fill in those blank spaces. Uh, let me know what you guys are think of the new DLC. Have you picked it up yet? Are you still on the fence? Are you, are you waiting for a sale? Uh, what do you guys think of it? I think the, uh, the foliage items itself not even taking into account the building or the animals the just the foliage pieces justify the cost for me don't tell frontier that of course but uh yeah the the plant work is just absolutely gorgeous and it really sold me on it and i'm enjoying using it this is another workshop house i'm going to put two workshop houses down here uh just incredible stuff truly like authentic to the region uh, if any of you guys have ever been to like, you know, Costa Rica or Mexico or any any of those uh, places in Central South America, you'll see homes like this. It's kind of like a, I don't want to say colonial, but like, you know, it's got colonial uh, aspects, uh, influences to it, you know what I mean? And it's just such a cool style with the bright colors, you know, the, the tropical colors. And so we set these up as uh, our little cafe. We have, of course, a Mexican, Mexilente or whatever it's called, and then uh, pizza and then a, a drink shop as well and created like a little food court uh, for our guests. The guests were all complaining that they didn't have anything to eat or drink, so I figured I should give them somewhere to kind of chill out from the sun and uh, relax and get some refreshments. But yeah, if you guys are on the fence about this DLC, I would say go for it. You know, it, the value that you get for myself is leaps and bounds above the cost point. Uh, you know, the animals are fantastic, but the amount of building pieces that they give you and the capabilities that you can, uh, of the things you can do with them, it's it's well worth the uh, cost of the DLC in my opinion personal opinion so if you are on the fence i say go for it let me know what you guys think of the dlc uh i think our next video like i said is going to be the uh giant anteater and the tapir if you guys have any suggestions for any other habitats you'd like to see as always leave it down in the comments below if you're enjoying the video, drop a like while you're down there as well. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, please. It definitely helps us out, gets uh, the channel uh, noticed by more people. But yeah, I'm struggling with what I want to do with the llamas. I've seen some really, really cool ideas out there. Uh, and pretty well everything that I have already dreamed about has already 
been done. I mean, that's never really stopped me in the past, but uh, if you guys have any cool ideas you'd like to see and you want to see me recreate, uh, just make sure to mention it and I'll, I'll try and do it some justice for you guys. So here is a couple more workshop pieces that I found. I was I had the goal to create like a poster board like this uh, for this area and when I saw it on the workshop I figured hey it saved me a couple hours of my tinkering around and honestly it looks better than I ever could have created anyhow so uh, yeah I hope you guys like this habitat I had a lot of fun making it the butterfly house is an absolutely cool concept I think I'm really happy with how it turned out, even though the building of the actual structure hurt my brain quite a bit. I'm really happy with it, and the butterfly lights are the most versatile thing in this entire DLC, and I use them absolutely everywhere in the park, or in the zoo now. I use them in the actual habitats of the animals to create light at night, being that you can change the color to any color in the spectrum it gives so many possibilities to the build and uh, I, I honestly think that it's the coolest item they added in this DLC but yeah that's it for my commentary here I'm gonna leave you guys with some cinematic shots as always I hope you enjoyed the video and my ramblings on about uh, butterflies and capuchins this has been our Colombian capuchin habitat. Thank you again for tuning into the video. I hope you guys enjoy the content and uh, you can look forward to some more videos coming out in the upcoming weeks. Thanks again for tuning in. As always, I'm Reckless and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.